that's a, that's a dedication that anybody that wants to be successful in something, you know, you have to give it up. You have to leave the ego at the door and just do what you got to do and make friends. Get, get, gain people's trust. You know, can I trust you to do this simple task? It's, it's a big deal because even now um, with DigiWax, you know, shout out to my team. And we've all gone through it. We've had people that you can say, hey, I need you to, to do this, you know, build this email list up, go through this, this email account, take out all the emails and, and build up this account. And they'll say yes, and in a week it won't be done. And then you have a person that you say, I need you to build this email list, go through this email and build it. And in a day, they'll say, yo, I know I, yo, it's eight o'clock. I know I'm supposed to go home, but you know what? I'm going to stay here and do it. And it shows you like, you know, star power. It star, it's just like the NBA, man. You know, people talk about well, Kobe was staying late and taking a, a thousand shots and this dude wouldn't go to sleep. He wasn't going to the club. Yeah, because he had the hunger and you can see that, you can feel that. When you get on the court, you, you perform like that. So that is the, the truth is you have to be humble and you just have to, you have to gain people's trust that they, that if they ask you to do something that you want to like over deliver, you know? hundred percent. I, I think, and I love the Kobe example you just brought up. I think so many people have to understand, right? What separates Kobe is not because he took a thousand shots because that's kind of a given in the NBA, right? Like, like I'm going to the gym and I'm gonna take a thousand shots. Yeah. Kobe wasn't leaving until he made a thousand shots. So if he had to take 3,000 shots to make a thousand shots, yeah. that is the differentiator. So yeah. no matter what it is that you're doing in your career, you know, you have to be, you know, everybody talks about, I wake up early, I go to sleep late, but what are you doing within those hours that mm. are differentiating you from your competition? Real talk, that's so real, man. Um, that's, that's a gem. And that's what I'm saying, like, um, I was just lucky to be, I think, to take advantage of all of those things, like you said, in, in that time. Because, um, after you know, the crazy thing, when we was at Crave and I got that knowledge, Mariah and Tommy broke up and the label just died. <laughs> so I was like, oh, snap, what are you going to do now? And then the, the story of how we met actually jumps in and comes into play because after that, I went back to a person who I'd met years ago and we was cool and that's what what happened the relationships um a guy by the name of rob stone okay you know, i was um rob stone. i had given him clothes and and all of that stuff from mecca and we was like yo thanks and we just stayed in contact here and there and uh he was like yo i got a new company i just started it's called cornerstone promotion and um what's up you want to come in i was like yeah i'm not doing nothing right now i'm like let's do it and when i went there it was cool, man. It was uh, it was a small company, very uh, grassroots and and family orientated. Gave my own office. I was I felt honored for that, and um, I rocked with him. A guy named Lee Majors, uh, uh, John Cohen. Um, who else, man? It was a lot of. It wasn't that big of a team. A guy named Jeff uh, Ricks. Who else? And, and whatever the whole, but, but Cornerstone was a was a very small grassroots promotions organization, and what we were able to do there was was awesome, man. We um, I I got directly into Mix Show and started really honing my craft on Mix Show, um, managing not just the urban but the rhythmic side of it, and became a double threat right then and there. Um, from from working records from Bad Boy to Atlantic to uh, L.A. LaFace, you know, all of these different labels. We were working all their projects and um, really getting it in. And um, we, we were able to, it, it also taught me how to sort of be, just begin building a brand. Because mm -hmm. um, there we created the 1200 Squad. We created the Fader Magazine and things that are living on till to, 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 to now. Um, which was, you know, just a, a dope DJ network, you know, with Enough and Green Lantern and all these guys that are now. Was this your first, was this your first position of directly working with the DJs? Um, I'm going to say it's my second, but more serious. You know, at that point now, excuse me, I was um, now more in tune, you know, because in the, in, in the beginning when I, that, when I was working at, Crave, I was working with DJs as well. 
you know, servicing them, doing all that stuff nationally and everything. But my one-on-one interactions was not as strong as they became. It wasn't your day-to-day focus at Craze, was it? It it was not all the way. It was not. It was part of my job. Yep. But it was a lot, man. It was like, well, you still got to go to the studio and make sure we get this shit mixed. You know, and, you know, I was pulling crazy hours at Crave. I was doing it, literally trying to become like a Magic Johnson, point guard, you know, small forward, shooting guard if I have to, center, whatever I had to do. Um, but when I got to Cornerstone, it was definitely more focused. Like, okay, let's become the best DJ department we can be. Mix show radio, um, rhythmic, urban, uh, even some of the college guys, street guys, everything in between. But let's do that but then let's focus on the superstars out of that so we're going to do this mixtape you know we're going to pick two djs a month that cornerstone mixtape is legendary what's up guys thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video truly appreciate you if you like anything you heard here today go ahead and hit that subscribe button and if you know anybody that can benefit from this message feel free to share Peace and love.